Here is everything you never wanted to know about electric vehicle charging. How long does it take to charge your electric vehicle? 10 minutes, 3 hours, 10 hours, 15 minutes, 5 hours. There is no short answer to that. Hi everybody, this is Electrified Veronica. I'm a consultant in the battery and electric vehicle space and two months ago I bought my first electric vehicle. It's not a Tesla, it's a Ford Mustang Mach-E. In this video we'll talk about electric vehicle charging. Let's start with the basics. Let's start with something that we all know, a gas-powered car, like the Jeep that I'm converting to electric. Six months ago it was running on gas. I could go 190 miles or 300 kilometers on one tank and we all know that there is basically one option to refill your car and this is going to a gas station. The first filling station ever was a pharmacy in Germany in 1888. Berta Benz, a German automotive pioneer, business lady and wife of Karl Benz, refilled the first internal combustion engine car on the world's first road trip. The first American drive-in gas station was opened in 1913. Before that, Americans basically also bought fuel and cans from pharmacies and refilled themselves. Today there are around 130,000 gas stations in the US. We all know it's very fast to refill your car, it takes a couple minutes at the gas station. Now how is this different for electric vehicles? So the battery of course doesn't produce power but it stores the electricity that we get from the local grids or from solar on your roof as chemical energy which is then converted into mechanical energy to drive the car. We get this power from a charging station. First surprise, the charging station is actually not really charging your car, it just supplies power. So it supplies electrical power and we all know that there is AC and DC power. As you maybe know, in the late 1880s there was a little competition over the type of electric power transmission systems. They call it the war of currents. Thomas Edison, the advocate for DC systems versus Nikola Tesla for AC. Thomas Edison even went as far as electro an elephant with AC power to demonstrate that DC is better. However, his little marketing campaign back then was not very successful. The majority of our global electricity network today is alternating current. Although more and more things that we're using at home, such as laptop computers, cell phones, LEDs, solar cells, electric vehicles are running on DC, direct current. So if the battery in an electric vehicle runs on DC power, how do we charge it? Option one, AC power from home, which is then converted into DC in the car on the onboard charger. Second option, DC power. This is what you find for most of the public charging infrastructure. The conversion happens in the charger and direct current enters the car bypassing the onboard charger. Most modern electric vehicles support both AC and DC power to charge the battery. Maybe you've heard people talking about level one, level two, level three charging. So let's talk a little bit about these charging levels. According to the Chase 1772 charging standard, there are four levels for AC and DC charging. So let's start with AC level one and level two charging. This is what you typically do at home. For most electric vehicles that you buy today, you have this this AC charger included with the vehicle. This goes into your car and then for level one this plugs in here and this goes directly into your wall at 120 volts. This is the adapter for AC level 2 charging. It's a little higher power, you can see the cable is a little bit thicker and this plugs into your 240 volts outlet. This is what you typically have for electrical stoves or dryers at home. AC level 2 is the most common solution for home charging and for our car it takes 10 hours from empty to full. In our case we have a third party level 2 charger from Emporia and we take this one in the car for road trips. DC chargers also come in two different power levels. DC level 1 charging is everything up to 48 kilowatt. DC level 2 charging is everything up to 400 kilowatt. So if your car only supports 50 kilowatt DC fast charging and you go to a 350 kilowatt fast charging station, you only get 50 kilowatt. My Mustin Mach-E is rated for a DC level 2 fast charging of 150 kilowatt. The important thing is your your car tells the charging station how much current to draw and this will depend on the state of charge and the temperature. So it's the onboard computer that tells the charging station how much power you need. My husband just told me no one would ever sit in a car like that so this is why I do it. 
most of the people tend to focus on these DC fast charging numbers. But in reality, most of the time you're actually fine with using AC power when you're home, when you're at work or when you're doing your shopping. By the way, in the future, there might be even more options to charge an electric car. We talked about AC and DC charging basically through a cable. Now, there are several pilot programs that use conductive or inductive charging from the top or from the bottom. This is charging while driving or of course also while you park. Another option that Neo is famous for is battery swapping. If you want to learn more about battery swapping and especially the modular concept behind it, go check out this video. How fast can you charge your electric car? So far we have learned that there is AC and DC charging. There are different power levels, but finally, how fast can you charge your electric car? Charging times are classified into the different charging levels that we discussed before. For my Mustang, AC level one through the normal wall plug is up to 47 hours. This is very slow, obviously, but you know, if you're somewhere completely remote, at least you have a way to charge your car. AC level two charging at 240 volts is around 10 hours. This is what I do at home. It usually comes with your car. And if you have the right outlet, it's really the best solution for home charging. DC level Level one below 50 kilowatt power is 89 minutes. And DC level two at 150 kilowatt for my Mustang is 47 minutes for a full charge. When I am on a road trip, I use this last option. Theoretically, you could install a DC fast charger at your home, but it's super expensive and it's just not worth it. You really don't need it normally. If you want to know these numbers for other electric vehicles, go to evdatabase.org. These numbers are different from EV to EV, but what does it depend on and how can we make it as fast as possible. First of all, charging time depends on the battery size. The bigger the battery, the longer the electric range, but of course the longer it takes you to charge it from completely empty to full. But the time for a full charge shouldn't be the number that we should compare. You also don't compare filling up a small gas tank and a big gas tank. We want to compare how many miles can you put in over time. From a technical perspective, for me there are three factors that are limiting our fast charging capabilities. The battery chemistry, voltage level, and temperature of the connector. If you know of any other, please let me know down in the comment section. So the first important factor that determines how fast you can charge your electric car is your battery chemistry. How much power can it accept over time? It's basically how fast can the lithium ions travel and intercalate in the electrodes. This of course depends on your chemistry, on the temperature of the battery, and the state of charge. There is a really cool research paper where they basically laser pattern the cathode material so the lithium ions can travel a little bit better and this improves fast charging capabilities. Second factor is the voltage level of the battery in your car. The state of the art is 400 volts but maybe you've heard that the Lucid system for example works with 900 volts. The advantage with higher voltage is that you can use lower current for the same power which means overall you can have higher charging currents and faster charging in general. Third factor is the heat through the cable and the charging connector. The higher the current that runs through these cables, the hotter the cable and the connector. This is why they have water-cooled cables for very high current applications. So overall, for fast charging, I would say we need a high current and a battery that can take up high current very fast. So while DC fast charging, so using high currents, is very fast, it's not necessarily the best for your battery if you do it on a very regular basis, at least for today's battery chemistries. So if you can, avoid it. By the way, these numbers that you usually get for fast charging are only valid in the window between 10 or 20% and 80% SOC. Using high charge currents above 80% state of charge is really not good for the battery. This is why most car makers actually limit the fast charging capabilities to below 80%. As soon as you are beyond 80%, they will reduce the power or the current that goes into your battery. You can clearly see that in the charge curve of my Mustang. Starting at low state of charge, you get 150 kilowatt charge power for a couple minutes. Then it changes to around 100 100 kilowatt and above 80% state of charge, it reduces down significantly. DC fast charging your car from 80 to 100% state of charge takes twice as much time as from 0 to 80. When I'm doing a road trip, I only charge it up to 80% during the trip so I can make it as fast as possible. How much does it cost to charge your electric car? And this is of course completely different.
different and different locations of the world. What you are charged for is the number of kilowatt hours, so the amount of electricity that you need to charge your car. So this of course depends on how efficient your electric vehicle is, so how many miles can you go per kilowatt hour. Now in my case at home right now I get the electricity from the local utility here in Wisconsin and I pay 13 cents per kilowatt hour. To charge my car from empty to full this will be 91 kilowatt hours so this is the size of the battery in the Mustang and I pay $11 for 270 miles. So what about public charging? There are different public charging companies out there. They all have kind of their different rates, their different membership options, and some of them are for free. Most of them are DC fast charging stations, some of them are AC. A typical number would be 30 to 40 cents per kilowatt hour. So when I charge publicly, it's around three to four times more expensive than charging at home right now. So for the first month of owning my EV, I drove 2,200 miles and I paid $135 for charging. This was a combination of home charging, some public charging that I paid for and some public charging that was for free. I want to give you a couple of recommendations for home charging. If you hear it takes 10 hours to charge up an electric car, you're probably shocked. But if you do your daily driving, which is probably 20, 30, 40 miles, you only charge for a couple hours. And all that charging typically happens overnight. It takes me 11 seconds to plug in and unplug. Another recommendation, and this is more towards the battery health, is I usually don't charge up my car more than 80% if I don't need it. You can set this in your app and I typically have my state of charge level between 50 and 80%. Another important thing here in the Midwest is using your electric car in cold weather. You do this by leaving your car plugged in overnight and you can set departure time and cabin temperatures in your app. This way your battery and the cabin are both preconditioned and you can really maximize the range in cold weather. If you happen to have peak and off peak rates for your electricity you can also set dedicated charging times in your app. Yesterday was Earth Day and I'm really happy to announce that we ordered our home solar system so in the future my electric vehicle will be charged from the sun. This is just a small off-grid test station with a couple used solar panels. This was everything you never wanted to know about electric vehicle charging with Electrified Veronica part one. Let me know if you have any more questions. <laughs>